Hello, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Details. What happens when a member or many members of a crypto community require a kind of service that does not yet exist? Well, if you're talking about Dash, an entrepreneurial soul can simply apply for funding from Dash's treasury to make that service happen. And that is exactly what senior web developer Brett Clanton has recently done. And here to tell you more about it is Brett. So Brett Clanton, before we get into any of the details about your proposal, which has recently passed the 10% threshold required to be funded, first, I would be interested to know how and when did you first hear of Dash? Um, I guess I first heard of it on your um, uh, uh, Daily Decrypt show. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard about it there and kind of did more research. And um, I guess it took um, uh, a lot of neg negative things to happen in Bitcoin for me to really do more research uh, more recently and kind of shift my attention over. What is it in particular within the Bitcoin space that caused you to, uh, to be willing to, to look elsewhere? I mean... Um, Basically, the the technology didn't seem to be moving anywhere. Um, I was trying to trying to help um, by building a node counter to uh, to kind of help influence uh, the rise of other clients and not mean, just the core client. Do you mean NodeCounter.com? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I am very familiar with that site. Please continue. Yeah. So I mean, I um, I kind of put a lot of time and effort into um, not trying to pick any certain side, but trying to um, make sure there was competition uh, among clients and among innovators in the space. And I was just very discouraged by um, this, you know, uh, the seemingly, seemingly lack of competition. You know, it almost seemed to get worse. I, I don't know. So um, uh, that and, and the communities got more and more hostile and, and kind of repetitive and uh, echo chambery, and um, so I kind of, kind of lost lost interest in that area. I didn't. I don't think that the the decision makers, um, which are actually kind of hard to define, but uh, I don't think the decision makers have the user in mind or the user experience, the best user experience in mind, and I don't think that's really the attitude that we should be taking. Ryan Taylor would agree with you that the decision makers don't seem to have the users in mind. Well, and, and let me give you a, a, a not retrospective, maybe retrospective, a retrospective thanks for nodecounter.com because during the Daily Decrypt, I used that site quite frequently. Um, mm -hmm. And so that leads nicely into your skill set. What is it that you do? I see you attached a very nice URL, brettclanton.com, to your treasury proposal. And there's all sorts of interesting things listed on that website. So uh, what is a summary of your skill set? I'm, uh, I'm a full stack Rails uh, web developer. Um, Rails meaning Ruby on Rails. It's a certain backend technology. And, um, and I have a ton of experience with um, with uh, front end web development, which is you know what's what's rendered in the browser, and I have a lot of interest and a lot of experience with UI and UX design, and so I tend to I, I collaborate with designers whom I respect, and kind of um, you know when working on personal projects, I kind of get a um, starting point from a designer, and I kind of take take that. Um, that uh, general branding and general design, high-level design decisions, and just kind of go with them. Wow. So, what gave you the idea to put in a proposal to the Dash Network? I guess I guess I, I should give it a little more introduction than that. You've put in a proposal. I guess it's about a week ago now to mm -hmm. build the web version of a local bitcoins for Dash, like a localbitcoins.com. 
what mm-hmm. gave you the idea that you could get paid to do this? <laughs> well, you know the answer already. I do, uh, <laughs> I do, and I want to hear it from you. <laughs> well, um, I was um, basically trying to decide what my next uh, kind of project would be, and I'm, I'm just generally trying to figure out where I want my career to go um, from a from a high level, and um, at a certain point, you know, I will. Um, at a certain point, you know, in the next few years, I will probably move on from from Calendly and, and do some other things. And you I would like those other what? things. Uh, Calendly, that's that's where I work full time right now. Oh, Calendly, got it. Yes, okay. Calendly.com. It's a it's a scheduling um, app that's um, I've been with them for a couple of years, and I was one of the earliest uh, employees there. And um, so. Uh, we're doing really well there. I'll probably kind of move on to the next project, and um, and I would like that project to be definitely something in the cryptocurrency space, and and where my mind is right now, um, definitely something in the Dash space. So I um, uh, raised the question on the uh, Dash subreddit about um, you know what what does the community need most, and uh, it was your idea to to create a local bitcoins type service for dash and um and i had all the information on how to create the proposal from your videos so you um you set me up real nicely there well i've got to say i could not be more excited about this getting funded because i so like as a user of dash as a person who gets paid in dash i so want this service because as it stands i am constantly having to exchange Dash for Bitcoin to then sell Bitcoin on localbitcoins.com. And it would just be so great to cut out not only just the hassle of that extra step, but Bitcoin in particular to deposit on localbitcoins.com you have to wait for three Bitcoin confirmations, which if you're lucky comes in 30 minutes. And so just the whole thing would just be so la 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 la, like faster with Dash, especially uh, if the service were instant send uh, compatible. And so that leads me then to ask you, uh, you've been posting recently about your in the initial vision, like basic vision of what your service will look like up front. So I would like to hear from you, like the name of the service and what we can expect to see on the first day that it is is live. Uh, well, the, the working title right now is, is Dashes, and uh, I'm sure you'll spell that on the screen. But um, uh, I'm uh, I'm. Picturing for, for the scope of the proposal and the scope of the initial launch, um, I, I'm planning for it to be completely um, local centric, so no online trading, no online exchanging. Um, that is both for simplicity. I mean, you need to build a foundation for the application that that you know. Th- this is how local Bitcoin started. It, it had a foundation that used local trading and then it built on top of that and so a you would need that foundation and b there's a lot of legal implications for act when, when you actually start handling people's money and um and um so it, it doesn't make sense to me uh or it's it's not really very um a very exciting concept to 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 spend all my time trying not to get sued or thrown in jail so the idea for now is to um, build a site where I can have, um, you know, uh, you can let the browser share your location with the service and then it can it can filter other um, people who are interested in buying or selling local to you. Um, you can, when you're selling, you can just define what the percentage, um, you know, uh, profit that you want to make on the transactions and then it can just be dynamic um, based on the current exchange rate, all those kinds of tools I think are needed just for people to be able to connect in a um, in an organized fashion. That that along with um, some sort of reputation um, uh, uh, feature, which I, I need to figure out how exactly that will 
be credible. But um, right. but basically, I think those are those are the foundation. And and so the from the launch, you should have um, a great tool that makes it easy to find other people that want to either buy or sell. And then you would um, kind of Craigslist style communicate with them directly, meet with them, exchange. And um, I plan to have all the information needed to to make sure you're operating within the law as well. Um, uh, that's all the know your customers, things like that. Those are things that I won't want to participate in from a service level, at least not yet. But um, I will in, at least inform the users on what they should do if they want to comply with um, you know, acting as basically a financial service at a small scale. And, um, and also uh, suggestions on how the transaction should work and, and what are good places to meet and things like that, all to try and help um, avoid any dangerous circumstances or any legal repercussions or anything like that. Interesting. Well, I'll ask you more about that in a moment. And I just realized that for any viewers who have never used localbitcoins.com, um, I just wanted to say what Brett is referencing when he says, uh, like handling people's money is local Bitcoin's um, feature of acting as escrow agent. So the basic gist of localbitcoins.com is that the seller of Bitcoin deposits their Bitcoin onto the site and local bitcoins then holds the private keys and then the seller can choose any number of people who want to buy it in any number of ways be that a bank transfer a paypal transfer cash in the mail meeting at a local coffee shop uh even exchanging for like gift card codes all mm -hmm. these sorts of things and so how did you find out brett that local bitcoins started as just as you're describing as a way for people to find out who within like their city or whatever wants to meet up in person like were you using local bitcoins when it was at that level of functionality or how did you find that out no i, I wasn't um i wasn't in the game in 2012 I, I wish i was um my my research kind of started on the uh the wayback machine really and i just oh. went literally went back to when they launched and, and took a look at, uh, you know, the, the, the features listed within the site, um, that along with anecdotal reports from people who were using it at the time is, is what I based that on. Interesting. So now tell me more about these sorts of prompts you say you'd like to have come up for your users with, did you say suggestions as to how they may if they want to choose to be compliant as mm. small scale as small scale money transmitters or and and how could you how would you make suggestions like would it be pay, be based on ip address or just like a general recommender paint me your vision um so i mean this is extremely early stages i started this research in depth yesterday but oh. um but basically um you know, uh, first and foremost, I need to protect myself. So um, there will be a general emphasis on the U.S. Um, because that's where I, at least I'm initially most concerned of compliance. But um, the um, it does seem that the uh, the financial regulations in the U.S. do kind of cascade downwards to a lot of other um, regions, but. Basically, I, I don't know if it'll be in the form of prompts or uh, terms of service or what have you, but the the general idea will will be that um, uh, basically I just want to make sure the the users are informed so that they aren't uh, thinking there's nothing that could go wrong. I'll just do this in the simplest way possible, and then you know they they reach some sort of scale where they tick some meter and 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 uh, all of a sudden have some sort of issue it's it, i mean it's uh I, I, people have been using local bitcoins for a long time i i don't think it's a uh real concern for the users but i want to make sure that the information is there so that they know mm -hmm. um you know what steps they need to do to make sure they are compliant um you know should should the need arise I can't say I'm aware of any metrics myself. Like, is there some level to be ticked 
that that you would I, I'm I don't actually know that much about mm. money transmitter laws care to inform me about what you know like, like I say you know that um, I just started digging deep into this stuff and it's a great read <laughs> um, yesterday oh I bet. Um, but um, I mean yeah so uh, so I have some notes um, basically any any fin financial service so technically if you're if you're selling dash i believe you could be considered a financial service you're acting as an exchange and um so there's the general um know your customer um laws that apply to all financial services and that basically involves um having some sort of proof of identity um at the simplest step i guess it could be a picture of their driver's license which is you know not really uh you know any more than you hand to every uh you know uh, liquor store clerk or bouncer at a bar or what have you and um and then also you know i'm, I'm just telling you what the regulations are you're supposed to know what the um when, when it's a cash um transaction you're supposed to ask what the source of the cash was Based on my current research, that covers you under Know Your Customer. And then there's also anti-money laundering laws. And um, basically, as long as you keep um, cash transactions under $10,000, um, then you are fine there. Any transactions over $10,000, even if they're broken into other transactions. So it's really more like uh, any uh, client that you've transacted had multiple transactions with accumulating to ten thousand dollars i guess would apply it, it seems a little ambiguous from what i've read so far but but basically mm. is as long as you stay under that amount then you don't technically have to report anything but if you go over you do so um i'll be uh just suggesting you know general caps on on usage and 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 when i'm when i'm uh when i'm addressing buyers or when i'm uh writing the terms of service for buyers i'll suggest that if you need to make a lot of uh, uh, exchange, the uh, cash to dash exchanges, maybe uh, spread it out over a couple sellers, which hmm. seems like a good idea anyway, but but um, it would keep you from uh, potentially getting them in trouble, I guess. Interesting. You know, it, that causes me to wonder, I've, I've done, I think over, 35 trades on localbitcoins.com and no one has ever asked me for any sort of identifying information or whatever so yeah i mean i guess i guess covering your bases as far as mm -hmm. you are concerned in terms of providing this information should anyone care to use it uh but yeah i guess in practice i have never seen it used so. I don't think local bitcoins actually operates in the U.S. or at least based on what I've heard. So that that could have a large, um, that could be a large, like oh, they, the see. business isn't operated in the U.S. From what I understand. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. But I, ha I haven't gone that in depth on on researching their business yet. So now this sounds like an awful lot of work, and work <laughs> is generally only taken on in in the potentiality of reward. So mm -hmm. you have applied for, is it two payments for 92 dash? Uh, two payments of 95.5. Two payments of 95.5 dash. Now I imagine that that will evaporate really quickly in an undertaking of this endeavor. So tell me about where you see this in terms of profitability in six months or a year as you said you see yourself uh leaving your current full-time gig and you would like to eventually move into something mm -hmm. else so am i guessing correctly that you see this site dash dashes as a potential like full-time revenue stream for yourself um I, I don't necessarily envision that um yet the the idea here is to um further build reputation within the community um, and kind of um, uh, build useful tools that, that help the community. And if I can do that and, and people like what I build, then um, either I can start monetizing this later. Um, under the, the, the terms that I defined in the proposal, the features that are within the proposal 
will always be free, but that that's not to say that I couldn't um, create new features that could be premium of some sort. Um, so that would be one possible way of monetizing it. You know, I could um, build the local component. I could um, create a po proposal that says, hey, I want to build all, all these kind of online escrow, all, all these other types of components. It'll cost this much. If the proposal passes, then I could just kind of go on that amount of money, which would be a lot larger amount of money because we'd be dealing with a lot of legal concerns. Um, but then if it doesn't, then I could go the kind of um, the kind of premium, like premium features route. So um, the, this proposal system is great because I actually, for once, I can start a, um, you know, a, a project that I think will help a community and I can actually have funding from the start to help with, uh, you know, all the upfront costs of getting the thing started. And um, so actually, you know, this has given me a luxury of not having to worry about profitability right now. And, um, you know, I, I won't be quitting my day job anytime immediately soon, you know, so the, you know, general idea is as long as I don't lose money, um, then I'll be pretty happy for, for a good while. Um, but when it, when it comes to a point where I'll be wanting to shift full time, um, then yeah, I'll be much more seriously considering, uh, monetizing dashes or doing something else, or perhaps dashes doing something else. I, I didn't want to lock myself into this specific, um, you know, type of, I didn't want to lock myself into the exact trajectory that local bitcoins went into, which is part of the reason I didn't want to call it local dash or something like that. I, I think it could be, um, you know, it could start here and then go any number of directions. And, um, and a lot of that is yet to be determined just because the industry changes so quickly. Um, you know, by the time I get this thing launched, uh, you know, who knows, um, in, in two, three months time, who knows what will have changed in the community and when, what the, what needs, uh, will have arisen or have gone away. So, um, the whole idea is to kind of stay flexible with the um with the project i think that's extremely smart fred <laughs> I, I i really do and and just like you said um it, it seems like such a great idea not to lock yourself into a specific trajectory of just one particular service because for example uh as has been discussed in a few different places online uh when evolution is released late next year uh, I believe, if I understand correctly, that anybody will be able to offer evolution sign-up services via uh, the DAPI, the Decentralized API. And so if I understand correctly, and that is the case, then a reputation system of evolution wallets would be essential, would be critical. And I mean, maybe maybe I'm just not like fully informed about about uh, how how a consumer would be able to tell like yes, uh, evolution-dot-com is a good place to uh, send sign up and send money, but wallet-evolution.org is like a total scam. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This all remains to be seen. But because it remains to be seen, I think that it's really wise of you to leave your path open. So I, uh, that was just me taking a long time mm -hmm. to congratulate you and say good job. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Brett, uh, I've already mentioned your website, so people can find you at brettclanton.com. And do you do social media? I do Reddit. You do Reddit. Tell people mm -hmm. your Reddit username. Uh, Brett C286. Uh, Brett C286. All right. Thanks so much again for your time. Uh, con congrats on getting an, on exceeding the 10% a voting minimum requirement. <laughs> and I, oh, oh, of course. Uh, duh. Like the obvious final question. Um, when can we expect to see, is it dashes.com? Uh, that I, I currently own that domain, so um, it's that's the very likely the domain. If at very least, if I chose some other name, I would forward dashes.com to whatever yes. uh, other domain. 
Yes. Regardless mm-hmm. of what you end up calling it, when mm-hmm. or general bar ballpark, when can we expect to see version one? I um I'm wanting to aim for early January. Um, you know, the 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 whole site will be built in my off time, but at the same time, I um I structure the payments over a two month period, um, thinking that's generally how long it should take. Although it, it will be the holidays, so um, so I'll, I'll have to fight for that that free time. But I'm I'm right now I'm thinking early January, and I will be uh, incredibly transparent on hours spent, money spent, all those things. And I'll be happy to keep people in the loop as that timeline shrinks or increases. All right. Well, early January, I mean, you've said that to me now, that's what's going to be in my mind. And Mm. there's no amount of pumpkin pie or turkey that can make me forget early (laughs) January. So let's shoot for that then, huh, Brett? Sounds great. All right. Thank you for talking to me. Have a great night. Do you speak Spanish or Russian or Mandarin Chinese? If you speak any of these three languages, Dash Detailed would like to receive a quote from you on what you charge for translation services. If you're interested in getting paid in Dash, send a quote, whether you charge by the word or by the video minute, to amanda at dash.org as we are seeking translators to add real person translated subtitles to all Dash Detailed videos. And as a final announcement, Dash's core development team is holding an open conference call tomorrow, Thursday the 27th, at 1400 hours UTC. So if you would like to listen in on the call and maybe even ask a question or two there, you will find details about it in the description section below. That's it for Dash Detail today. Follow me on Twitter, why don't you? And I will see you next Wednesday. CoinFirm has decided to add Dash to their prior roster of Bitcoin-only compliance services. I'm speaking with a Dash project manager who will be providing support to CoinFirm, as well as CoinFirm's co-founder and CEO.